Welcome back to another exciting firewall video. Our scenario continues. Our organization continues to grow. In this scenario, we've introduced a Unix accounting server. Um, this is a server that has an application running on it. And that application is any Unix or accounting uh, application. It doesn't matter what it is. And we're gonna say that that application installed on this machine listens on port 39. So just basic generic application, any application that the accounting firm uses, it's on port 39. We want this to be set up that only our accounting department can access this server. It doesn't matter whether their IP address is 55.6.5.1 or 55.6.5.250. Any one of those IP addresses should be allowed to connect to this uh, box. So because we don't want anybody accessing it from the outside world, we simply make no rule changes to our border firewall. Our border firewall is configured that it's by default going to block anything. We're creating a whitelist at our border. And since our existing border firewall only allows incoming TCP traffic on 443 to our web server of 55.6.3.2 good.org, we don't have to put a rule here because we're creating that whitelist. Um, and we'll say this is using TCP traffic. So now we want to lock this down so that Mike the IT nerd or Pat the HR specialist can't get access to this application. And so what we'll do here is on our Unix server, we will create a firewall rule that says allow incoming TCP traffic on port 39 from 55.6.5.wildcard.anything. And so everybody, because of the configuration that we've done with our DHCP server, we know that only the accounting team will get an IP address in the subnet.5. So since when we, as the IT specialist, we configure which subnet each machine goes to, we've configured our DHCP server to allow our one human, um, one accounting machine to be in subnet five. The firewall rule here says, allow any incoming TCP traffic on port 39 from subnet five. And so it doesn't matter if Alyssa gets 5.1, 5.6, 5.20, 5.80, any of those numbers, this firewall will allow that. Now, when Alyssa launches her application, the application is going to be configured to point to the server, and whether that's pointing to the DNS name or the IP address does not matter. It'll still traverse our network, hit this firewall, the firewall will allow us through because Alyssa is in subnet 5 and she's communicating on port 39, which is the default for this generic application. Now, the problem that we have is what we've just done is we've allowed Alyssa's machine or any machine with subnet 5 IP addresses access to this environment. And so in most organizations, if Alyssa logs out of her machine and is not currently using it, an IT nerd Mike walks up to it, sits down and logs in. And if it's connected to a domain, chances are he has that permission. When Mike logs in, because the system looks at its MAC address, the MAC address looks at the DHCP server and says, oh, this is an accounting laptop. Give this laptop subnet five and an IP address. And so if Mike, the IT person, successfully logged into this system and launched the accounting app, the traffic would traverse the network and would make it through the border firewall. So to prevent that, this is where our next step of security has to come in, and then we put authentication in place. So what happens is that even if Mike gets onto this machine and is able to launch the application, the application traffic will make it to the server, the server will respond, but the first thing it's gonna respond with is an authentication page. And that authentication page is where you have to put in credentials. And obviously, we would never configure this to allow the IT nerd to have accounting access. So that's why we talk about username and passwords being so sensitive because 
once somebody gets access to this machine, the firewall is no longer going to prevent them. Authentication has to prevent them. And as you all know, authentication, single factor authentication is, is not enough. And so that's where we introduce multi-factor authentication. And so we actually would put multi-factor authentication here to help secure that environment. But again, because we're focusing on firewalls, we have our Unix accounting server. The Unix boxes are in subnet four. We've manually assigned that IP address. We've installed the app. We've said allow incoming TCP traffic on port 39. We configured our firewall to do so, and we don't need to change our border firewall because our border firewall is a whitelist and it's only going to allow the things we specifically allow. So this is how we now introduce in a Unix accounting server and control that only one department can have access to that. 